I've had a lot of questions in the past about setting up Ubiquity access points with a third party router and not a Ubiquity cloud key. Now this is possible. Now this could be a router from a service provider or a third party one that you are using in your environment at the moment. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set that up. So I have my router that I've been given from my ISP and what I'm gonna do is set the access point up standalone. Now there's a couple of things you're gonna need. You're gonna need the access point itself I'm using a U6LR and you're going to need a PoE injector unless the router itself has PoE on it. Now unfortunately the newer Ubiquiti access points don't come with a PoE injector but I did have a spare one lying around so if you are looking to set this up standalone you are going to need a PoE injector. So let's jump straight in. What I'm going to quickly do is log into the router itself so you can have a look at the settings and what I've got set up. Now this is just a quick demo and isn't a representative of my existing environment. I do have a Ubiquiti setup, but I'm going to show you this anyway. So I'm going to quickly show you my SSID and password and show you that I have my phone connected to it and my computer connected to it as well. Here is my phone on the right hand side. You can see I'm connected to the standalone AP and I have an IP address of 192.168.0.66. So what this means using the existing wireless modem router and I'm connected to that directly. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download the Unify Network app. I already have this downloaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and click open. But the other thing you need to keep in mind is you need to make sure you have Bluetooth turned on as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the app and you can see straight away there, it says the U6LR is ready for setup. Now, I'm not logged into any account. You can see in the, in the bottom corner, it says log into your UI account. So I'm not logged in at all. This is just completely standalone. So I'm gonna click on the U6LR and then it tries to connect to it. And it says you're about to set up a standalone independent AP. So if you have a quick read down here, the AP will not be associated with your UI SSO account or remotely manageable. So you're not gonna be able to get to it remotely. So we click continue without console. Now you're gonna give the access point a name. So we're just gonna keep it as access point Wi-Fi 6 long range, cause that's what it is. Click next. Now this is where you would set up your Wi-Fi SSID and password. So I'm literally gonna copy what you can see next to it. So stand alone AP. You wanna make sure it's exactly the same. So there we go. That's set up there, stand alone AP and test and the password. There is advanced options, so you can separate the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz network if you wish to do so. And it's gonna go ahead and add the access point. So I'm gonna let that continue and I'll be back as soon as this has been added. So there we go, it says it's now complete and I'm gonna join the Wi-Fi network. So it's gonna say, do you wanna join it? Now I'm already part of this network, so it's probably gonna try and join this access point. And there we go, it's now connected. So you get a pop-up straight away which says this is an independent AP which can't be remotely ma managed, which we saw before. Then it gives you a list of all the features you're gonna get if you use a Unify OS console. So you have remote management, device identification, internet security, remote and VPN access, traffic management, application filtering, and access point meshing. So we're just gonna click OK there, and you can see that's now set up. So this is what we can do in terms of setting up in terms of configuration. So this is the access point set up and you can see scrolling down here, it shows you all the information, locate the device, restart the device. The other thing, going from top to bottom, you've got the device version. It shows you the SSID for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it shows you the number of clients connected. What I'm gonna quickly do is go to configure and show you some of the other bits that are here. So you can change the device name if you want. You can enable the LED status. It shows you the radios. So this is where you can configure your channel, bandwidth and transmit power, both frequencies, and also you've got your device credentials and your WLANs. Also, you can see the firmware version, there is an upgrade to this, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and quickly click upgrade and show you that it can be upgraded even though it's a standalone version, so I'm gonna let that go off and do that. What I'm gonna do then is actually turn off my Wi-Fi on the router itself, so I will only be using the Unify access point just to show you that that works perfectly fine as well. So you can use them both together or you can use it just as a standalone unit itself. So you can turn off the Wi-Fi completely. So there we go, you can see the device version just there is upgraded to 6.0.15. I uh, just wanna take a side note here just to say if you have found this video useful, do remember to hit the subscribe button, like and do comment down below so I know how useful this has been. Also, there's a new feature available now called the Super Thanks. So if you do find this useful and you do want to help out this channel, 
hit the super thanks button and it will help me out greatly. So what I'm gonna quickly go back and do now uh, is turn off the Wi-Fi. So advanced settings, wireless. This will differ from uh, service provider to service provider. You'll just have to dig through some of your settings. I don't know exactly how every single one works. So it just really depends. But what I'm gonna quickly do here is disable the 2.4 gigahertz and disable the five gigahertz and click apply change. So we just give that a minute to configure. What I'm also going to do at this point is quickly unplug the access point so you can see that there's no Wi-Fi called standalone AP and then I'm going to plug the Wi-Fi access point back in. So you can see just there that if I, you can see the standalone AP is there but if I try and connect to it, it's not going to be able to connect because there is no SSID available and eventually after a few minutes it will disappear. So you can see it's not available there and if I quickly show you the AP is completely unplugged at the moment so there's not it's not connected at all. So there we go, you can just see as I was saying that the standalone AP has disappeared. So what I'm gonna do now is plug the access point back in and then we can see me connecting to this device. So there we go, just to show you, it's powered back on. You probably see the blue light very lightly there, but that's powered back on. You can see on the right hand side that I am connected to standalone AP. So if I go back now to uh, the Unify app, you can see that actually we have a client connected. And just to show you within the um, software itself for the service provider, you can see the access point is just here. So 192.168.0.69 and you can see that on the phone as well on the right hand side. And you can see the two devices are connected on the client side of things. That's pretty much it in terms of setting up a standalone access point. You can add as many as you want to your network, two, three, four, and you can set them up all independently. They don't work if you try to mesh them, but they can all work independently. Remember, the super thanks is there for if you found this video useful, and it does help the channel out quite a lot, and it helps me bring you more videos like this. Let me know down in the comments below if you've set this up successfully, and how you're finding it using it as a standalone access point. This is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.